This is Stock Talk, a discussion of stocks in the news with the analysts of Zacks.com. Well, Bank of America stocks slid this week to below $5 a share, its lowest level since the depths of the financial crisis in 2009. We're going to find out why this is significant now from our stock strategists, Tracy Reinick and Bill Wilton. And you wrote earlier this week in one of your commentaries, Tracy, that it's the reason it's significant is because the big gun investors typically don't like to hold stocks that are under $5 a share right. in their funds and in their portfolios. Right. So b that being the case, this then could be termed a pretty critical situation for Bank of America. It could. Um, you know, normally it takes more than one session for everyone to start selling and getting out of it. So you're not going to see you know, all the big mutual funds and the big institutional holders necessarily jettisoning it on that one day where it's gone under. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, they're definitely going to be looking at it here. There's no doubt about it. And, you know, it can significantly affect the stock if it continues to hold under that $5. That's the, why this $5 level is so key. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen it with some of the other banks. We saw it with Citigroup. They had to do a reverse split to get out of their one to two dollar range in order to try to lure back in some of the bigger institutional investors. And there's some talk, you know, and it's just talk and rumors that Bank of America might have to do the same thing in order to keep these bigger guns in the stock. But that remains to be seen. So, Bill, as far as the, the momentum on this stock is mm -hmm. concerned, this five dollar issue has to be adding a whole ton more pressure on the stock than was previously there. Well, it definitely does. And that's one of the things why people you know, always focus on that $5 level. It's not necessarily that people don't want a stock under $5. A lot of mutual funds have rules that govern the way the portfolios run that strictly forbid any stock from under $5. That happens, you have a rush of selling that can put even more downward pressure on a stock that's already hurting. Um, here you can see the longer term chart. Uh, the severity of the recent decline is a bit muted because you can see that we've got, uh, you know, the 08, uh, 09, crash in there so right. that you can see how far things have come down. But that is uh, definitely a slow bleed. Um, you know, the stock has lost well over 50% uh, of its value there. So that pressure is there. Uh, but like you said, um, this $5 level is coming into play here. We are seeing some support because so many people don't want to see it go under $5. Not necessarily that they're sentimental and really love Bank of America. Yeah. Uh, they have a fiscal interest in, in not letting it go below $5 at least until they can, you know, settle their position. So that's why these reverse split rumors, uh, you know, and things like that are, are starting to swirl around here. What um, was, in your opinion, what was the reason for the pressure? What's, what exactly is the pressure culprit here? Is it their assumption of all of that debt and all of those issues that they took on when they took on Countrywide? Is it a combination of two or three things going on here? What's at work? I mean, I would say it's a combination yeah. of, of plenty of things. It's it's hard to find a redeeming quality in Bank of America, um, especially right now. Yeah, um, I mean, the earnings earnings have not been good. Um, they're only expected to make a, a penny this year, and that's been, you know, kind of on the volatile area because no one seems to know exactly what's going to happen even in the next, like, couple weeks. Um, and then next year, it is a little bit improving picture. They're supposed to make 98 cents, so that's quite significantly higher. But only three months ago, the analysts were at $1.22. So they're already lowering for next year because, again, oh, there's a mm -hmm. lot of uh, things going on. I mean, they've been in the news, it seems like, nearly every day. I mean, they just, had a, yeah. Yeah, they just had a big settlement that was for Countrywide that was like $350 million. Right. That was for a discrimination suit that was going back to like 2004 that they inherited when they got Countrywide. Right. That isn't even the big mortgage settlement that's still in negotiations. And that could be up to $25 billion yeah. split between several banks. But I mean, they're going to take a big chunk of that too. I mean, they're still, they're expected to lay off maybe up to 30,000 people in the next year. They're selling off some of their like various units to raise cash and get their cash, you know, short up. Um, so they, you know, have some real issues out there in terms of their business model. So it's kind of a combination of things yeah. here with them. So Bill, as far as the momentum on this stock is concerned, you see it heading straight down, at least for the foreseeable future, not even plateauing around five. Well, it's hard to say, you know, right now we are seeing that support level at $5. Um, and even though Bank of America does get a lot of bad press, you know, the Occupy guys would love to see it go below five dollars <laughs> all the way to zero. Don't even go down. Uh, that but there road. are there are a lot of people out there that see Bank of America as a prominent name and say, 
I'm going to get this huge bank out of $5 a share. I'm coming in. So that's why we're seeing, uh, you know, some support here as well as the issues we talked about earlier. Right. Uh, but if you just look at the chart, it looks like shares have been beaten up. They're oversold. They're getting some support here, you know, outside of the fundamental picture that looks pretty bleak that we, you know, we're obviously very bearish on. Uh, some, some people might look at this and say it's a good opportunity to try and scoop up uh, some shares if they are looking at it in a vacuum. So, Not Tracy, might that be one of the reasons why the big gun investors are cutting this stock a little bit of slack right now and not holding a mass exodus running for the door? Well, yeah, I, th I still think it's a prominent name in the group, and some people do see that it could come out mm -hmm. of this, as Bill said, that it could be kind of a value play because, I mean, it definitely has, you know, earnings growth so far that we can see. Um, as small as it is going into next year. So all is not totally doom and gloom. So, I mean, you have big investors like Warren Buffett, who not many months ago spent $5 billion to get preferred shares. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it definitely people think that this bank is not going to go away. And okay. the other thing they'll see is, you know, when we bottomed out a few years ago, shares went up 500, right. 600% from there. So, you know, a lot of people are salivating over that kind of a, of a, of a potential bounce back. All right. Thanks for the information. Mm -hmm. This is certainly another one that we're going to keep our eyes on. What's going to happen to Bank of America? Unfortunately, only time will tell. With Tracy and Bill, I'm Terry Ruffalo.